We're gonna talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. I'm sorry if you are picking up the noise in the background, but someone has been mowing the grass for like eight hours and we're not waiting because we need to just chat already. Okay, so today we are going to have the sex talk. I'm not sure what exactly the title of this is going to be yet, but I'm thinking this is the sex talk that I needed, but I had never got. Maybe that you needed and you never got. <laughs> I'd like to preface this with, I am not a sexologist, although that would be cool. I am just a human having sexual experiences. And so this is just a chat. My parents didn't give me this talk. Teachers didn't give me this talk. And these are things that I feel like we should, this should be happening. These conversations should be happen happening. So if they're not happening, someone should have them. So it's happening. We have to start with like the sex talk that I actually got. I want to know like in the comments what your sex talk was with like or if you even got one. So if you know me, you know I don't have the best memory. But for some reason, the sex talk that my parents gave me individually live rent free in my head for the rest of my life. So when I was, I think I was in fifth grade, my mom told me that sex is when two people love each other and they lay on top of each other naked. And I think I remember this, <laughs> this moment so much, right, so vividly because I was like, no it's not. <laughs> That's what I thought in my little brain. I was like, no it's not mom. <laughs> No, it ain't. And she stopped that. That was a period. That was the end of the sentence, and that was our sex talk. Two pe I'm sorry. Mom. <laughs> I know you. I'm here. I know that's not what it is. I know you. You. I know. Whatever. I've told her that so many times. <laughs> I've confronted her on the sex talk so many times that it's kind of funny at this point. And then the only thing that I heard from my father was to use protection. And I think that was like somewhere around 16, 17 years old. I realized by now, and I'm sure you have too, that our parents are human. They did the best they could. If you think about it, like, well, my parents, they're baby, they're boomers, baby boomers. My mom's sex talk that she got from her mother was don't have sex. Uh, be abstinent and that was it it was a fear thing thankfully i had sex educators and people that liberated me outside of the classroom and outside of my parents i was raised by sex with sue and she i'm sure like shout out in the comments if you were, were raised by sex with sue as as well and she if you have no idea what i'm talking about sue was like this old woman bringing on sex toys and she was so sex positive positive. and i would watch sex with sue like every night like it was like after dark programming and she would just bring on like these huge dildos and just just talked about it so normally like oh thank you sue and then when i got older I listened to Sex Nerd Sandra podcast was really good. It's not on anymore. And then I listened to Sex with Emily podcast. And so a lot of those are very, very sex positive. So today I just want to touch on like a few things. Uh, wait till the end. Stick with me because I am going to touch on some harder topics at the end. I'm going to start kind of light. And I do want to say kind of a trigger warning. I am going to be talking about sexual abuse and sex trauma a little bit in this video so if you are not in a place where you're ready to hear about those things um just go ahead and click out of this go watch my coming out story or a different youtube video no worries love you so anyways first things first masturbation why didn't i did not start even think about masturbation until my early 20s i'm sorry what why is it that most boys start masturbating from a young age. Why, why did I and a lot of other women not, some of us still don't, but I would just like to say that masturbation is normal. It is a basic human need. Masturbation is like drinking water. It's like eating vegan meat and potatoes. It's like washing our hands. It's like showering. It's like exercise. Masturbation is an act of self-love and it is normal. It is okay. Vibrators and dildos and 
toys are wonderful. The sex that you can have with yourself is amazing. It's critical in, in our development, in our independence. And I think a lot of us wait so long because, or I think I waited so long. One, because I, I mean, I watched Sex with Sue. It's like, I don't know why I didn't. Um, maybe shame, maybe just like a disconnection with my body. I wasn't comfortable. I'm not sure exactly what it is. If you can unpack that for me in the comments, if you like know what's going on, <laughs> let me know. But yeah, I just wish that I could tell little Courtney, like start exploring yourself because those are the best adventures, I promise. <laughs> and Lube is going to be your best friend. We are not waterfall. I don't care what Cardi B, B says. WAP. That, um, mm, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, get some good quality water-based lube and life will be good. Okay, second thing, sexuality is a spectrum. Do not have to pick straight, gay, or bisexual. They are all op beautiful options, but labels are for you and for no one else. Uh, they are there to empower you, and if you are empowered by calling yourself gay and a lesbian, by all means, take that label and run with it and wear that flag proudly. Or you just don't feel like labeling your own sexuality, that's okay too. It is for you. And and attraction is something that you kind of have to work through and it's ever evolving. You might wear one label today and in 10 years you might feel comfortable with a different label and change and progression and self-discovery is beautiful and it doesn't, um, it should not be used against you. You know what I'm saying? Another thing I'd like to talk about is when you look at porn and you see how perfectly formed a vulva is in porn, they don't all look like that. And it's okay if yours doesn't look like that. Mine doesn't look like that. <laughs> Some people get surgeries to change their vulva and make it look like the women in porn's vulvas But who said that those vulvas are better or the ideal? Third, let's talk about consent. You do not owe anyone anything. This year and last year, I started to unpack and hear about incest, incest. <laughs> ancestral trauma you might have heard of it it so trauma can change us on a cellular level and that trauma is passed down from generation to generation to generation and what our moms went through and what our grandmas went through everyone what they went through if we do not address um these traumas they will stay with us and keep getting passed on and passed on and passed on and while why i'm mentioning this is because it's 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 relevant um there is sexual trauma on in my family that's so ingrained that no one is talking about. I'm not gonna go too much into it, um, but I do wanna mention it because I, it gives me so much conviction to talk about these things because you know those elephants in the room? Like that, it's like your whole entire family knows what happened, but no one is talking about it. And this year, I really questioned one person in particular about that abuse and tried to unpack that just for my own healing and so I can break that cycle. And I don't think that we can break those cycles if we are in a state of denial and if we are silent about those things. And while I'm not going to dive so deep into it because it's not my story to tell, I think the reason there's so much shame around sex is because I think the baby boomer generation in particular was told to just not have sex. And sex was this demonized thing that was only for procreation and not for pleasure. And then we were told, or they they and we were told, stranger danger, sexual predators are going to be hiding in bushes and behind trees and they're going to be in the dark, so lock your car. And while those things do happen and those things are very valid, most sexual predators, and if I can get a statistic, I'll throw it up, are in your family unit. They're family friends, they are uncles, they are fathers, they are brothers. Um, I'm not saying 
saying it's only men that are predators. They are, they are, most predators are very, very close to home. And so when you demonize sex, pleasure, and masturbation, and you say it's such a horrible thing, but then you don't talk about it, and then those children get sexually assaulted and they blame themselves. They are shamed. And um, fuck that, fuck that. As parents, and adults, we have a duty to talk about these things. We have a duty to talk about these things and make our children feel safe and give the information that's necessary to protect them. <sighs> Consent is so, it's such a, okay, so we're taught to stranger danger and everything. Um, there's three instances in my life that I have experienced sexual abuse. I have never been, been raped by a guy behind a tree or a bush. But there are three instances that live in my brain that I will never forget that in, t in different moments of people that were close to me and that had my trust. They're all things that I think I've digested and healed from. So I don't know exactly why I'm, I'm sharing. I guess I just don't want you to feel alone or you to feel like it's your fault. And I'm also like just telling myself that, I guess, in this moment. One of my boyfriends in college that I dated for like a while, like almost a year, I think. The very first time we were intimate, I didn't want to be intimate. He pressured me over and over and over and over. And I said no and tried to push him off me like multiple, multiple times. And not in an aggressive way because uh, we were dating, but I still didn't really want to, I didn't want to have sex. And after so many no's and him just insisting, I just gave in. And that was only a few weeks of us dating. And after that, like we're dating for like, I, again, I dated him for a year. Like what? That's a red flag. That is a red flag. If you say no and someone is so persistent, that is a red flag. I eventually called him out for that like years later and I told him please don't do that to anyone else because that just really like I think hurt me on like probably a subconscious level. Um, and then the next, the next, I'm just going to share another one because I feel like sharing. The next instance, I don't ever share this story because I don't want to. This is one of the, like, the one of the few terrible situations I've had while traveling and I don't like to, I feel like, I don't like to scare women away from traveling because this shit happens in your own home, in your own church, in your own safe space. But this just so happened to happen when I was traveling in Mexico and I was, um, I stayed, I was couch surfing and I stayed with this guy and I, I felt safe because he had a bunch of good reviews and he, on social media, was very, he had a partner, he had a girlfriend and they had been dating a long time. I felt that those were two like green flags. So I went out with him the very first night and there was no flirting on my part at all i didn't find him attractive he kept buying me drinks and shot kind of pressuring me into drinking and because i didn't really feel comfortable in the situation i didn't feel comfortable saying no i was like in, in my early 20s at this point i think we went back to his place and i you know went on the couch because that's where i was sleeping for the night and i had no intention of sleeping with him and i remember like very vividly that i was like kind of curled up because I didn't want anything. I didn't even want to signal that to him. And he went like this and it was like he was going to give me, he was like, oh, good night. Going to give me a hug. And I was like, okay, like awkward, but okay. And then he went in like really, really aggressively and started kissing me. And I was so, I was probably on the verge of being blacked out. Um, that and i was in his home that i didn't feel comfortable saying no and i just remember thinking in that moment that just go through with it um it'll be over and then you can leave but i was too scared in that moment to say no um and the experience was terrible it was extremely violent and aggressive and yeah i just felt like i couldn't say no and the next morning i woke up and <sighs> i just felt like regret you know i felt like a certain amount of guilt on my part and looking back on that uh those situations it was premeditated 
that was premeditated on his part. He had decided a long time ago that he was going to do that and he was going to get me drunk and that that was going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind. Like, I think those things happen all the time. That's rape. And I can't even say that. I've actually never called it that, but that's not consent. That's definitely not consent. And then the other situation I would like to share is that in one of my relationships, I was, I didn't want to be intimate and the other person complained all of the time and really just kept pressing the issue would come on to me and like again didn't i would say no but then they would keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and then i would just give in because it was easier and that's not okay either you're allowed to say no and when someone doesn't respect the first no that's a red flag that is not okay I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I just felt compelled to share those stories. You do not owe anyone anything. I don't care if someone buys you a drink, if someone buys you dinner, if someone buys you a car. That does not equal sex. And I think it's especially like difficult to unpack that like when you're dealing with codependency as well because growing up with alcoholism, boundaries aren't always a thing and you are so used to just doing whatever you can to like help the other that person. And again, like yeah, just boundaries aren't really ever a thing and if you try to, it just makes this all this even more confusing. That. I didn't, I didn't really expect to, to go that deep, but this was healing. I hope this video compels maybe you to talk about, even if it's not sex, just to talk about something that's taboo or something that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, like just to start some type of conversation out, outward. If you have experienced any type of i'm sure if you're breathing you have experienced shame trauma sexual harassment sexual abuse um you are not alone and there i'm gonna end i hope you enjoyed my sex talk i love you and i'll talk to you again soon don't forget to like and subscribe mm -hmm.